Is the iPhone 13 a better phone than the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3? Um, let's take a moment to discuss. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. If you've been here before, thank you once again for coming back. I really do appreciate it. Now I'm talking to you, you new people. If you like talking about smartphones, if you like talking about tech, hit that subscribe button down below. Yes, you, I'm talking to you. Have you done it yet? Good, thank you. I should probably start this video by saying, you know, the uh, trigger warning, all that kind of stuff, because if you're a, a knee-jerk sort of simp for either Android or the iPhone, this video may contain things that would upset you. I'm going to be saying things that you might well not agree with and may even challenge your sense of self-worth or identity. So if you think that you might be triggered by this discussion, then I encourage you to stay because it's good to challenge your uh, preconceived notions. I might very well hurt your feelings. There's no crying in smartphones. But I'm interested in exploring this topic, you know, iPhone versus Galaxy Z Fold uh, 3, the, the, the two phones that are probably the best among the phones out there right now. But I'm going to talk about it up here at 10,000 feet, as opposed to like down here, individual things. This particular thing is better than that. Anyway, let's move on. First off, I'm, I should say that my, my SIM card is still in the Galaxy Z Fold 3, and I am still very much enjoying the Galaxy Z Fold 3. Even though it's time for me to do my iPhone 13 review, I am still uh, doing the Galaxy Z Fold 3 thing. So for those of you who might think that I'm like biased toward Apple, or those of you who might think the other way, honestly, I use both often. I use almost every every major phone that comes out in a given year. I'm going to talk about build. I'm going to talk about screen quality. I'm going to talk about the battery. I'm going to talk about camera quality. I'm going to talk about overall performance, which is probably where it's going to get interesting because you could define performance in a couple of different ways. So first, let's talk about the build. The Galaxy Z Fold 3 and almost and, and a lot of Android phones otherwise is a very well-built phone. Materials are good. The, the Galaxy S21 Ultra is probably my favorite Android phone of 2021, if not my favorite Android phone I've used all year. This phone offers me, as I said in my review, a lot of stuff that I can't get from other phones. And build quality-wise, it is much more solid than it was in the past. It feels like a real phone. And so therefore the materials that are being used, how far they've come with the screen technology, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, is, is very, very nice. I wouldn't kick the Z Fold 3 out of bed for eating crackers, as the saying goes. But when we come to the iPhone, there's just a level of, of detail and polish on the iPhone that Samsung has over the years gotten closer and closer to, but in holding the two devices, the iPhone still has the more premium feel in my hand. The screen technology is still looks better to me. To me, this is a very aesthetically pleasing design. The, the frosted glass on the back with the Apple logo embossed there. It's strange how when we first saw these camera, camera extrusions, they seemed very odd. They seemed like they would look very weird. And at the end of the day, just the way that the, the frosted glass comes up to meet the edge of then the very glossy and clear camera bump, the way that it separates itself, this to me is a level above the overall design and build of any Android phone that I've used, including the Galaxy Z Fold 3. So what about the screens? Both screens on the Galaxy Z Fold 3 are great. They're 120 hertz panels. They're super AMOLED screens. They look fantastic. They reproduce colors very vividly, very nicely. And there's nothing really to complain about except in order for Samsung to achieve what they want to achieve here, they, ha they have to have this crease, and that's not optimum. And then they also have to have this smaller screen on the front, which is also not optimum. And so when you have two things that are sort of, sort of holding back what would otherwise be a very, very nice near perfect screen, it's hard to argue that it is in some way better than this screen, which is honestly 
there's nothing wrong with this screen at all. And, and now that everybody's gotten their way and we have 120 hertz, there's nothing to complain about. So I would have to give the edge in terms of screen, even though this is bigger and there are two of them, I would have to give the edge in screen to the iPhone. And now we come to battery. And battery is arguably in 2021, in my opinion, the most important feature that a phone can have because it can have a great screen. It can do a bunch of different things. It can, you know, have fold, it, it could origami itself into any shape that it wants. But if the battery life is not good, then there's going to be a problem with the phone. And while I love the Galaxy Z Fold 3, and while the battery life is acceptable, it is not the best battery life that you can get on a phone. And Samsung had to make compromises in the battery in order to get this form factor to work. And while that is a great achievement, it does lessen the score that the battery would get when compared to another device. Meanwhile, Apple slow and steady wins the race. They improve the battery life of their phones across the board. The iPhone 13 mini and the iPhone 13 Pro each got an hour and a half more battery added to what was already the best battery life in the business. The iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 Pro Max each got two and a half hours more battery life. That's over and above battery life that was already the best in the business. Once again, you compare the two, you have to admit that Samsung, with what is arguably the flagship most forward-thinking phone that Android has to offer right now, it's still somewhat a compromised device when compared to the iPhone talking about battery. So what about camera? Uh, camera is a difficult one. The S21 Ultra probably had the best all-around camera that I have used on an Android phone. Uh, so I have to give credit where credit is due. The video performance of the S21 Ultra was still not uh, reliable enough for me to trust it with stuff that I do while I use iPhones all the time as secondary cameras for the work that I do. Uh, the camera on the Z Fold 3 is yet another compromise. Even though to use this phone, I am willing to work around the camera deficiencies that this phone has. Again, Samsung has had to make a compromise in order to make this phone, and I guess to make it in a way that people could actually afford it. Meanwhile, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, last year the cameras were improved with the addition of Pro Raw for still images and a lot of different things. And I think for many people, the best cameras out there, uh, not to mention the fact that Apple has always been better at video than anybody else out there. This year, they took that best video performance and then they've they've notched it up yet another level with cinematic mode, which is something that, you know, needs to be talked about in its own right. And I'm going to make a video where I talk about cinematic mode. But cinematic mode takes a technique that's used in high level film production and puts it on an iPhone. A lot of people are saying that cinematic mode, well, it's just portrait mode for video, and that's been around in one form or another on other phones, but it's not just that. It's the ability to rack the focus from one person to the next to really be able to change the focus of an image without having to change the placement of the camera. That's a very strong, powerful storytelling tool and that Apple has been able to take that feature, figure out a way to put it on a smartphone and make it work in such a way that it changes the potential for what people can do with video with this phone in their hands. That is something that pushes forward. It's not a compromise. It's not halfway there. Apple as many people love to discuss, doesn't do anything until it's ready. They are very, very risk averse when it comes to their devices. That makes some people feel good. That makes some people very frustrated. And I can understand why. But risk aversion in terms of Apple helps a lot. They got the 120 hertz right on this phone. It doesn't drain the battery. It still does exactly what it's supposed to do. And 
nothing had to be sacrificed in order to do it. The same goes for cinematic mode. The same goes for the pro res feature that they're just now bringing to the camera. So what about performance? And I'm not talking about speed. I'm not talking about snappiness or anything like that. Apple's animations are meant to sort of mimic the movement of your finger. And then, you know, when you open an app, it slides up. When you close an app, it closes down. It's a, it's a very fluid animation, whereas Android's animations are more mechanical. And I'm not saying one is good and, and the other is bad. Android's animations are just as good. But you can go into Android settings and you can change those animations uh, to be faster or slower, whatever you want. Not something that Apple's, Apple can do. So I'm not talking about that kind of performance. But what I want to talk about is the performance when you're you're using the phone, the user experience. A lot has been made of the Apple ecosystem. A lot has been made of the fact that Apple tends to tell you what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to use the phone, how it's supposed to integrate with everything. A lot of people point to iMessage and say iMessage is the reason you should use Apple devices. And and that's a little bit of a simplification, but what I, I appreciate about Apple, what Apple makes easier than Android is the bringing together of all your related devices and being able to use them all in concert with one another, with the iPhone sort of being the central hub of all those things. Not only can I you know, I message somebody and it doesn't have to it, higher quality photo, photo transfers, et cetera, et cetera. Not only can I get all of my I messages on every Apple device that I have around the house, be it my iPad or my, my MacBook or my iMac or any of those things, not only can airdrop send whatever I record or want to share with my Mac over there, just send it right over. Not only is that the case, also there are little things. Using the Apple TV, instead of having to scroll back and forth and spell things, you know, by one letter at a time, whenever you bring up a, a, a typing screen on your Apple TV, your iPhone automatically says, hey, you're typing. Do you want to use this as your keyboard? You can use this as the, as the remote for your Apple TV if you want to. That's the level of detail and functionality that iPhones have have built in the kind of performance that you can get, the kind of integration into your life that you can get that is possible on Android. Don't get me wrong. It is possible to do these things on Android. The difference being it doesn't happen automatically. It doesn't happen right away. It takes a little bit of work. It takes a little bit of know-how. And ultimately, the iPhone's goal is to make all these things easier. When it comes to overall experience, build, screen, battery, camera, performance, as much as I love this phone, and as much as I am going to use this phone primarily with my SIM card in it this year, I still cannot look at the iPhone and not say that on very significant levels, it is a much better, much more optimized, much more mature and polished device overall than any Android phone that I've used. That might seem like a slight to Android users. It's not meant to be a slight to Android users. It should be something that Android users recognize and say, hey, we would like to have the kind of fit, finish, and polish that the iPhone experience is in our devices. And unfortunately, because of the nature of how Android works, it's you know one operating system on many different devices as opposed to one operating system on one company's devices. And the, you know that gives Apple the opportunity to really optimize at a more granular level than any Android manufacturer can do. Samsung is making efforts in working with Microsoft. Samsung DeX is a move toward something similar to being able to uh, to being able to integrate into your computer with your phone. Samsung is doing things. Samsung is probably the company that's moving forward the most. Whereas most Android phones are phones first, and everything else that they might do otherwise is sort of a secondary function. The iPhone has become a hub for 
an ecosystem that runs a whole lot deeper than I really ever could have imagined. And it makes using this device much more of a holistic and polished experience than any experience I've had on Android. No matter how far Android is pushing the limits of form factor, of different technologies, etc., etc., Apple's slow and steady wins the race approach to their, their phones, their devices, their ecosystems has put them in a category all their own at this point. Really, the argument isn't, is the iPhone 13 Pro Max better than the Galaxy Z Fold 3, or is are the iPhones better than Android phones, or any of those kinds of things. iPhone has become, at this point, its own thing. It's over and above the concerns that Android has. All the things that Android still struggles with, iPhones have overcome. And now Apple is moving into an entirely different era of development of their devices. Whereas Android is still iterating and perfecting the devices that they currently have. Maybe folding phones are the future. Maybe they're a, a step in the right direction. I, I enjoy using this phone. However, I cannot in good conscience say that this phone in all of its glory doesn't in some way give me a lesser experience than this phone holistically overall. You let me know what you think down in the comments. This will be a very interesting video to discuss. Once again, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.